Hey guys, Rochelle here with Fem Fails in another episode of our Red Rock Zoo, Australian Desert Zoo. And uh, this is going to be just a quick little video of my me filling in this corner here by the river and we're going to put in some warthogs and ostriches. So we'll get that in. I just really, I don't know, this is right close to the front entrance so I really wanted to fill in this area really quickly before we moved on to some of the more exciting animals. I really like the warthogs. They're one of my favorites. But uh, they're not, you know, one of the five-star animals that everybody comes to see. But I like them. So I wanted them near the front. We had this open space. And you could see them from across the river. So I thought that would be a good idea. And then they always, always escape the little baby warthogs, and so do the ostriches. So I thought we should put them together and then we can keep them all enclosed because this is kind of a big space. And I thought about splitting it in half too, but because neither of these animals, there's no benefit of putting them together, but it was just a big area and I wanted there to be as few fences as possible. So I thought, why not? And I really want to use this cave a lot, apparently, and uh, I don't think that's a good spot for it, but here it is. And I decided to do everything in the, uh, we're going to use some African um, plants, but mostly I want to keep it open and deserty. They are more grassland, but I thought near the river everything would be a little bit more green anyway. So we'll use some of the, uh, what is that, elephant grass? We'll use elephant grass, maybe some palm trees, but I would like to keep it quite open and um, I love the red rocks and the red sand, but we will see how much of that we can keep with these animals. And uh, they will have a little bit of access to the river, but I just like how this trough and stuff looks for the uh, for the little warthogs. They really, they are my favorite with their cute little tummies and their little tails that stick up straight. And they're just, they're so funny and they make the funniest sounds. So I like the warthogs and I never did before. I have to name one Pumbaa and then the ostriches too. They're just, they're funny. And we'll be able to put in a bunch of them. Well, no, they have lots of babies, but I think the adults actually will have two, two warthogs and maybe three ostriches. Whatever is the maximum amount, we'll do that. And I struggled with this fence. I'm using the same structure that I built for the camels. And I think I'll use that quite a bit in the... Um, African biome as we keep moving through this. I think it's it's just a little bit different than the Australian um, zone that we're moving out of now. But still, it's using the same pieces and it's it goes with it, but it's different than anything that's used over there. So I, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. We gotta put some mud pits, some straw, I wonder which between they'll use. I imagine if they want to go to sleep, they don't really want to be looked at that much. So I put two just out of curiosity, which one um, they will like more. I'll put that over there for now. Right there, good. I don't like to see the edges of these guys, so we'll try to hide it a little bit. That is for the ostrich. Can we put in a sprinkler? Yeah. Something like that. Okay. And then these. I, I like it to look kind of barnyardy. I don't know how you would what you would call that, but I like to see these uh, the trough and the feeding thing. Like they're wild pigs. I also felt like they were. I wanted them in the Australian area because I think wild boars are. Uh, they are in Australia, but I'm not sure that they were supposed to be there. I think they were an introduced species. So I was like, I could just put warthogs in and pretend, but we won't do that. We're going into the African animals. So that's another reason that I wanted to be in this kind of transition zone here that we can say there are wild pigs in Australia too. 
but not actually the word hog, so then we'll actually be accurate. And we'll cover up the edges. There, and we can copy paste that over here for the mud pit too. Save a little bit of time. Perfect. Oh, or not. There we go. That's better. Haha. <laughs> Okay, sprinkle in some more rocks and then we can get some animals in here and check out the terrain painting. All right, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, of course, we do need a way to get in and a keeper hut and all that fun stuff. So I guess we'll just put it side by side. This is very Australian looking. I should maybe take some of those um, themed piece off of here. It doesn't look that bad though. I'll think about it. And what else do we need here? Let's put in another, a little shop just to cover that up a bit so you don't have to look directly at it. And then it needs a tree. When in doubt, put a tree. Perfect. Probably needs power over here. I should check that too. There, and we can use the same stuff from the camels. There, I wasn't going to use it on the roads, but I really like those uh, these purple shrub bushes, whatever they're called. I think they go really nicely. There, and again, we want to keep it nice and open and grassy. Some more rocks. Okay, I think it's time to get some animals in here then. Oh, not yet. Oh, now I have to adjust all of our um, whatever those are called, the habitat signs. Because I definitely filled in the camels ones. I put so many camel ones. But that's okay. It's an easy fix. It would have been nice to have these side by side since we have the two uh, two species in here, but we can see where they all decide to go. Here we go, they're coming, they're coming. All right, let's see here. We don't have enough space. Sand. Everybody's quarantined. All right, lots of grass. Okay, they didn't like my, my planting, so we will take all of that away, I guess. Okay, and grassland stuff. I love these grasses. I'm setting them down at different layers. You have to be careful though because some of the animals like the baby warthogs. I don't know if the adults ones can, but the baby ones definitely they walk on top of them like uh, like if they're a rock. So if you put them near a barrier, they will use them to escape. So like I will have to check once the babies are uh, born in here, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to escape into the river here with this null barrier. Even the adults will, actually. We'll probably have to change that, but I like it like that for now, so we'll leave it like that until it's definitely a problem. All uh, the people running around, bouncing off of each other. Nice and grassy. Okay, happy, happy. So we got three ostriches in here. We need some feeders. That's probably good enough. Yeah. They're happy, they're happy. Perfect. Okay, now the warthogs. Oh. There we go. So which of these houses will they choose to use, I wonder? The stables. There, I'm gonna do all this little finicky stuff. Cool. Yeah, probably move that over there. Go away, people. Get out of my way. 
I have an urge to start singing Hakuna Matata, seeing these warthogs. I won't, though. I will save you that. Yep, yep, he escaped. That's what we thought. Okay. So, we can move these rocks, but this is what I figured. We'd probably have to put a fence, but maybe we'll lift the rocks up over them, too. Just in some places. Stay away from there. No more escaping. There, I did it. I don't really like how that looks, though, but no yeah, deal. Okay. All right, there we go. That's our quick little uh, warthog and ostrich habitat. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I had some good captures here of the fat little warthogs. Where are you? Let's see you. Cool ostrich. Where'd you go? There he is. Oh, oink, oink. He's so cute. Run for me. Let's see you run. He's so chubby and cute little feet. Yeah, cutie. Wee! Oh! Oh my. He's acrobatic, this one. Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.